Hey folks, welcome back. This is Brady with Brady's Workshop in Delhi. And today with our build, we are gonna find out what this, the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, has to do with this, an old bookcase that we tore out at a basement we just finished. And the answer is this. We are gonna be building the almost original garage doors that they had at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. These garage doors were in from the 1920s all the way up until 1985. And so this is a project I've been wanting to do for a very long time. And I've had this lumber earmarked for it. When I saw it and started ripping it apart, I knew exactly what I wanted to do with it. So I have some time here before we really, really get busy in our spring summer rush. So I thought, what better time than right now? Take a day and let's knock this out. Takes a little more in a day, but most of it got done in a day. So this is a real exciting build for me to do this because as I go through and build this, I'm gonna be sharing some of the pictures that I have of myself, my family, my daughters, of the speedway we have a family tradition that we play hooky from school every fast friday and we go out to the track and what fast friday is it is the day before the first day of qualifications where they are doing nothing more than looking for speed so that's called fast friday so i have all these pictures from when my girls were very little all the way up to last year and it's just a neat thing to have All right, so how this project is going is we're basically just making two barn doors and we're framing it. And we are just gonna be sticking these up to the wall. They are faux doors, they're not functioning doors. And the rougher it is, the better. And as you can see, I am fired up for this project. Shaking my head. So anyway, imperfections is exactly what I want. I do not want this to look perfect. I want this to look like it has been used and abused and worn and gee whiz, dude, settle down. We're getting it done. It's still shaking my head. Okay. So back to what I was saying, we want this to be very rough and rustic and that's why when i saw this lumber um it was painted it, oh my it, oh, come on man that guy needs a hard cut so you can see here so we have two doors um that we framed up and i had that wood panel on the bottom it was already there so i just kind of went ahead and used that as the bottom of the doors and so it worked out perfect, but like I said, rustic, I, I want rustic. When I went to paint it, I went and bought the worst, crappiest paintbrush I could possibly find. I just gooped the paint on, and to me, it still hasn't come on crappy enough, but that's okay. And the other nice thing about this is where it's located. I, this is a spot where I stack stuff all the time and there's just a lot of traffic. And that's perfect because we're gonna bump into it. Um, it's gonna get nicked, dinged, and I love that. That's what exactly what I want to happen. Yeah, so as I mentioned, I, I really do want this to be rustic. So I tried to get the seams close. I, I wasn't overly, overly concerned about them. You can see here and like between the two doors, that seam between the two doors, it is not smooth. It's, uh, it's not square. I didn't want it to be. And uh, one side kicks out a little bit more than the other because the drywall um, 
is just not very smooth because it's in a garage. So the drywall guys didn't do a great job when they did it, when they built the house. But I love that. That's it. That is exactly what I wanted. This was such a cool day when Elio won his fourth. Here he is, this picture I took when he was getting ready to kiss the bricks. So there's a lot of parts in here that I don't really have video of because as I mentioned, I was just trying to bust this out really quick. So I just kind of turned the camera on when I turned it on and didn't have it on at other times. That's why you didn't see the main doors being built. I just kind of threw them up real quick. And after I was like, oh man, I should have taped that. And kind of same here. So what these are, these are just the uh, panels that are going to be sitting on the bottom of the barn doors. And this is kind of one of those areas where I wish I would have planned a little bit ahead because these are, you know, based almost three quarters of an inch thick, just like the, uh, the styles and rails that are on there. And really those are supposed to be set back behind the styles and rails. So I just didn't want to take the time and throw them through my planer. I mean, if I really, really wanted to, if this was going in my basement, I would have gone through that hassle and that work, but for the garage, I wasn't going to do it. So here you see me painting. I had those panels in now. Um, they're not secured, but we're just slapping the paint on. Now the other part is I could not find a dark enough green of what the actual color was. I tried to do some quick research to find out if I could find the color online. Couldn't find it. So this is the green I have. It gets darker with the second coat on there, but in reality, it should be quite a bit darker. It's almost like a, a green blackish, but it still looks cool. See, I told you I didn't have video of a lot of stuff. So we primed the bottom and the black area. So that's going to be the window. So some of the windows were blacked out um, historically at the track. And some of them, they just kind of painted the back of them white. And it was the point was to cover what was inside the garage when the garages were closed. They didn't want people, you know, checking in on their cars. So this actually worked out well for me because I was going to use um, MDF panels and ran into some chalkboards at Lowe's. And I was like, oh, that fits perfect. So that's what I put up there. And then I am just using extra MDF, uh, quarter inch MDF as the white fillers that you see me putting on right here. So I did this for very, very little cost. The, the biggest kind of hassle or headache is if you can see that extension cord going up into the wall, I, I had to make adjustments on the sizing at the very beginning because I had that wall outlet and I wanted to make sure that that rail going through the middle was perfectly aligned with the um, outlet. So I bumped that outlet out, redid it, works perfect um, painted over it and you really can't even know it notice that it's there all right so what i'm doing i'm just putting some uh regular wood glue on the back of this mdf and then i'm putting a couple dabs of ca glue and that's what that spray is it's just the activator for that ca glue for it to stick and it's a alcohol base so it'll come right off of that uh, chalkboard now we're gonna have uh, Deli Boy here be backup singer
All right, now that we got through that nonsense, we can finish this up. You may notice we have some natural light coming in here now, which is a great thing. That means spring is kind of sprung and we can start flipping the, the shop doors up and get some and natural light in here. Tired of your traveling ways and of listening to that jackass bray. All right, so we're going to do a final wipe down here, and then we're going to have a guest appearance from somebody that, well, here you go. My walking deficit, one of. So again, this is another Speedway thing that brings family together and makes us special to have Emma come out here and help me paint this. And what's cool is both my girls, they, they love the track, they love the race, they love the drivers, they love the stories. It's really cool. So here very shortly, Emma and I are gonna be discussing the 1973 race and she's gonna do a little research on that. First, we gotta talk spring break and cute boys. It doesn't get any better than some cute bathing suits. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I just hope there's some cute boys down there that we can check out. Ugh, cannot wait to go walking the beach looking for cute boys! Walk behind them? No, the boys have to chase us. Oh. And you have to go in the middle. Absolutely. Let's go, what's your act? <laughs> Am I saying that right? Huh? Do you know what that means? Yeah, what's your Instagram? Right? Or your Snapchat or... There we go. Hey, close enough. No, I need to do it. <laughs> So now that supervision is left, is she going to A, leave, B, check her phone, or C, keep painting? Obviously, it's going to be checking the phone. I mean, you're 14 years old. You've been away from your phone for 10 minutes. The whole world's gone by. This girl, I just shake my head. See, she's singing, just like her dad. Check that phone again. Think what you're going to type. Think it through. All right, there we go. Got it. We know exactly what we're going to say. All right, now that we got that text done... Let's get back to painting this bucket. This bucket's not going to paint itself. All right, one more check and then I'll get to paint. <laughs> Love that girl. All right, management's back. Everybody back to work. Productivity, high level. It's a Sunday. Let's go. You missed a spot right there. So I'm not going to show that wreck, but you can find it on YouTube, 1973, Swede Savage, and it will come up. It was a tough wreck, and he was in second place. And his teammate, Gordon Johncock, ended up winning the race. Go see the start of the race. There's a massive wreck at the start of the race. It was a horrible race. Oh, my God. The start? Yeah. This is what's fun about doing stuff like this is 
you know, my kids take an interest in it. They like the stories about it. And when we go out to the track, they have an understanding of what things are, where things happened, the history of it. It's just really cool. And I love that they love it. All right, folks. So that is our project and really happy with how it came out. You will see in the next pictures here that we did get a darker color, which worked out crazy good because a customer actually came to me with this color, needed it on some shutters. And that is the exact color I needed. So absolutely crazy how that worked out. Um, you will notice here that I did get some vintage stickers in and we put those on. We've got a couple more to go um, that I have ordered. I also put uh, gate hinges on the sides as well as a lock hinge in the middle, but really love doing this. My wife desperately wanted this done and I had put it off for years and she said, Brady, when are you going to do it? And so I did it for you, honey. So that is done. Now there is one thing we are going to be adding on to this project and that is a top sign. I am going to use Tom Sneva's as you see here. And I'm going to make that and we will put that above and that'll be our finishing touch. So I hope you enjoyed watching this as much as I did making it. You will see a lot of it because I will be using this as a backdrop. But thanks for watching, guys. Appreciate it. Like, subscribe, whatever you got to do. Uh -huh.